In this video, we're going to talk about one specific business application of linear programming, which is investment portfolio selection. So investment portfolio selection, in these type of problems, we are usually, uh, we usually have multiple investment alternatives and our job is to pick the uh, set of alternatives, set of investment alternatives that uh, are expected to lead to maximum revenue or for a given expected revenue, they provide us with uh, minimum risk. So usually we're talking about either a maximization of expected return or minimization of risk. Uh, and most of the time, if, you're, if your objective is maximization of expected return, you define a certain amount of risk. You're allowed to uh, tolerate a certain amount of risk. So you add risk as a constraint, or you can add, uh, you can consider risk as an objective and then have return as your constraint. At the end of the day, you will always have one objective. There are also uh, ways that you can incorporate both return and risk in your objective function. Again, the, the, uh, the only thing is that you should just have one objective function in the classical linear programming problems that we're solving here, all right? And then in portfolio um, optimization or portfolio selection problem, the type of the constraints can be, the, there is actually a vast variety of constraints that you can consider, uh, including restrictions on the type of permissible investment. Sometimes you're only allowed to invest in fixed income, uh, securities, sometimes uh, equity. Uh, it, it just depends on uh, what is the policy and um, like how much, um, how you're actually defining the mix of um, uh, the investment uh, securities, investment tools, right? State laws, depending on the case, company policy, and so on and so forth. The type of the customer, the market that you're in, uh, again, the amount of risk and return, those, either of those can be, um, consider as, um, uh, as a constraint in your problem, uh, the mix, uh, the amount of diversification, the budget that you have, these are all different types of uh, constraints that may exist. So we're gonna solve one specific example here, a very simple one. We are considering five alternatives Atlantic oil, Pacific oil, Midwest steel, Harbor steel, and government bonds. And then we have the projected rate of return. These are expected values that are going to happen, let's say, uh, in the next year, right? So if you invest $1 in or $100 in Atlantic oil, you are, I mean, assuming you, you can assume this is a stock. And uh, so if you buy $100 worth of Atlantic oil shares or stock, you are expected to get $7.3 at the end of the year, right? So that's how expected return works. Uh, so having this, having the projected rate of return and knowing that we have a budget, capital budget, of hundred thousand dollars. This is the uh, this is the initial investment amount that you can put down on a uh, combination of these investment alternatives. Our objective is to maximize the return, projected return at the end of the year, right? So yes, these are annual rate of return, and um, our decision decision variable uh, decision variables here. Uh, and the reason we are actually using LP is because the way we define this problem is that our decision here is 
how much money to put on each one of those. If that is the case, if this is your decision, and then you have the option to go from zero to infinity, right? Zero to 100,000. In this case, this is our cap. On any of those, right? I mean, we're gonna talk about the constraint, but in terms of the decision variables, they can take any number between zero and 100,000, any decimal number. If that is the case, then LP is, is the best tool that you can use. Sometimes it's not the case. And in, in, in the next chapter, chapter 12, we will talk about, uh, again, we will talk about portfolio selection, but, but with uh, a new tool, integer LP, and with a binary uh, formulation. It's gonna be different, we will talk about that. But for now, all decision variables are defined as continuous. They can take any decimal numbers between zero and 100,000. So our decision is how much money to put on the first investment alternative, on the second investment alternative, how much money to put on the third, fourth, and fifth one, all right? And then we have some diversification constraints here in this case. On top of the budget limit that we had, we now know that you, you cannot put on any industry more than 50,000, half of your money on any industry. And you have two industries here, oil and steel. Uh, so the amount that you put on uh, Atlantic oil and Pacific oil, the collective amount that you're investing in these two should not be more than 50,000, half of your money. Same thing for steel, the amount of money, the collective amount of money that you put on steel, either Midwest or Hover should not be a greater than 50,000. Amount invested in government bonds should be at least 25% of the steel industry investment. So government bond, the amount that you put on this one should be, uh, should be at least should be greater than or equal to 25% of the amount that you put on uh, uh, the, the collective amount that you put on steel industry because two shares are coming from. The investment in Pacific oil, the high return by high risk, but, but high risk investment, Pacific is this one, high return and high risk, cannot be more than 60% of the total oil industry investment. So this basically is telling us the Pacific, this one, the amount that you put on this one should be less than or equal to 60% of the total amount that you put on oil, on Atlantic oil and Pacific oil. So Pacific oil should be less than or equal to 0.6 times the amount that you put on Atlantic oil plus the amount that you put on Pacific oil. Um, the, so now, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna write down the formulation because you have them on your slides, but let's just quickly review them and then go to Excel and solve it. So here, uh, as you know, the first step is to determine the decision variables and assign one variable to each one of the decisions that we are going to make. There are five alternatives. The question that we want to answer here is how much money to put down on each one of these five investments. So five funds, five investment alternatives, five decision variables. And I'm gonna put one variable, I'm gonna assign one variable to the first one, second one, third one, et cetera. Uh, so we can call them, we can, um, I mean, you, you can go with the abbreviation or you can just go with X1, X2, X3, X4, and X5. Just add an index and each index corresponds to one of these uh, investment options, right? So that's for decision variables. Next, objective function. What is it that we want to uh, optimize? Uh, we, uh, the way we evaluate our decisions, the way we say if we have made the right decision or not, is by looking at the projected rate of return. 
that's that's exactly how we are making our decision and so we want to maximize the projected return total return so i said for each hundred dollars that you put on atlantic oil you're making seven point three dollars in projected return now if you put one dollar in atlantic oil you are going to make 7.3 cents or 0.073 dollars now if you are to decide uh if you are going to make x1 dollars investment so the total money that you're going to get in return out of this investment this this first part is going to be x1 times the projected rate of return for uh, atlantic oil the first investment plus the amount of money that you put on the second investment times the projected rate of return of the second investment and so on so that will give you the um, the uh, total projected expected rate of return in one year and you want to maximize this now the next step is to write down the constraint so the first constraint is the budget constraint, this one. The total amount of money that you can put down on this investment cannot be greater than $100,000 because $100,000 is your limit, is your budget. You can't go beyond that. So here you can say less than or equal, or you can push this to be exactly equal to 100,000. This way, you will, um, your model is gonna make sure that every uh, single dollar on your budget is gonna be spent. But uh, since our problem is a maximization, here is a maximization, uh, the solver is gonna make sure that, uh, it's gonna make sure to use up all the budget for sure. So even if you put less than or equal, that's okay. When you solve it, equality, this is gonna be binding for sure uh, next we said you cannot put more than let me just quickly go back here the first one neither industry should receive more than fifty thousand so uh, the oil industry the total money that you're putting on oil the total money that you're putting on steel should not be greater than fifty thousand or less than or equal to 50,000. So that's constraint two. The third constraint, amount investment invested in government bonds should be at least 25% of steel industry. So government bond was X5, and that should be at least 25% of steel. Steel is X3 plus X4, and 25% of it, uh, X5 should be greater than that. 25% of the collective money spent on steel industry. And then we said the next constraint was that the Pacific oil sh should not be more than 60% of the total oil industry. And then Pacific was, Pacific oil was X2. So X2 should be less than or equal to Pacific oil, the amount that you invest on that should be less than or equal to 60% of the total oil industry investment, X1 plus X2. And that's it. That's, that's the whole list of uh, constraints that we have. And on top of those, we have a non-negativity uh, constraint uh, for all these investments options all right now i just want to come here having this uh, formulation let's go ahead and solve it in excel so uh, we have uh, five decision variables we have um we have the objective function and a set of constraints so let's go ahead and solve it in excel so first uh, for each decision variable we need to have one blank cell so decision variables and then one for each one. Um, Atlantic oil, 
Pacific Oil, Midwest Steel, Hover Steel, Government Bond, and then one blank cell for each one of those. All right, five decision variables. They're all continuous. They're all they they all can take decimal values. All right. Next, objective function. And for objective function, uh, I just need to have these numbers. I'm, I'm going to type them separately uh, before my decision variables. Um, I'm going to have a return, rate of return. So for Atlantic, it's going to be 0 0.073. Point hundred and three point zero forty six point zero seventy five point zero forty five. So these are my rate of return for uh, the alternatives that I have. And then objective function is going to be some product of rates of return and decision variable. All right. Okay, so now the we need to just get to the uh, constraint. And for each constraint, we need to have a left-hand side and a right-hand side. So constraint one available, I just call it constraint one, a budget or available fund. And that would be, I just put the left-hand side here. The left-hand side is the total money that is being invested, which is the sum of all these decision variables. The sum of the money that is being invested, and that should be less than or equal to 100 thousand which is our budget constraint two that is uh, oil industry maximum oil industry max which says the amount that is spent on that is invested in oil which is sum of Atlantic and Pacific oil that should be less than or equal to 50,000. So I just copy this, but then update this to 50,000. Constraint three. I have the steel industry, Mexican. And then the total amount invested in steel should be less than or equal to 50,000. 50,000, all right? So that's constraint three, government bonds. The total amount constraint for government bond minimum. The total amount invested in government bonds should be greater than or equal to greater than or equal to 25% of 25% of the investment in the sum of investment in in uh, Steel, which is X3 and X4. So 
So 25% of sum of D17 and E17, X3 and X4. So yes, so government bond should be greater than or equal to that. Next, constraint five, which would be Pacific oil uh, restriction. And that would be that the amount investment in uh, the second alternative should not be, should be less than or equal to the 60% of total investment in the oil industry, which is X1 and X2. And again, just copying the formula. So all is good. I, I now have decision variables, objective function, and this set of constraints. Left-hand side, right-hand side, and the sign. Of course, I don't need to put the signs. It's just for me to remember uh, what I need to um, basically set in my solver. Uh, all right, so I want to maximize return by changing five decision variables and subject to, I have three less than or equal that are connected. I just add them all at the same time. And then one greater than, greater than or equal to constraints. And again, another one that is less than or equal Okay, so everything apparently is uh, set in terms of the constraints, making sure that the solving method is so simplex. And it seems that we have got everything in order. Decision variables, objective function, and the set of constraints, simplex LP. So we can go ahead and uh, click on the solve and when we do that, I'm, I'm not going through the um, answer report and sensitivity report for now. I, I just want to see the uh, investment. This is how much, um, how much we're going to spend, how much we're going to invest on any of those. As you can see, Midwest still is not uh, enough, like we were not investing any anything in that, and it's always dominated by Haber Steel. Um, whenever we want to make uh, steel investment, uh, we just go with Haber. And the total um, projected return that we can make by investing hundred thousand dollars is eight thousand dollars. That's the projected return. Projected. Return objective function. That's our objective that we wanted to maximize. 